hello guys, I hope you're keeping well. Welcome to Alistair Aquatics. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at my nano saltwater aquarium behind me. So let's take a closer look. Okay, here's the tank. So yeah, these are the same clownfish you guys saw in the video a little while back. Um, I've basically upgraded them to this longer tank. Um, I just like it because it has a slightly larger footprint. Um, and I've always been a fan of these uh, long aquariums. Um, so, yeah, this tank is looking really good. As you can see, the clownfish themselves are looking healthy. I have two turbo snails in there and two nasarius snails in there and a few pieces of coral. So the tank has been running for maybe a couple of months now um, and it's pretty stable. Um, it is weirdly going through a sort of slight cyano phase as you can see on the rock there nothing too bad i'm keeping an eye on it if i'm honest that was probably caused by the move um i think it sort of knocked things slightly out of balance by moving all the uh sort of rock and sand from one tank to another um but yeah other than that this tank is a bit of a dream it's going really well and um, it's sort of smooth sailing um i do about a 30 to 50 percent water change once a week at the moment and it is a super simple nano reef the only sort of two pieces of internal equipment on this aquarium is that little eheim internal filter that is an eheim mini up internal filter and i attach just a little um outlet just to sort of aim the water up at the top there um, and believe it or not that little pump there is on medium it's not even on full flow at full flow you know you can see the clownfish are actually visibly having a bit of difficulty in the tank and yeah so I had to turn the flow slightly down so that little pump it's called a mini up eheim pump is really doing a great job at moving the water and you know the idea in this tank is that what's doing the biological filtration is the rock itself um, but by having this little internal filter it just means i can put filter floss maybe a bit of chem pure blue, a bit of purigen, any sort of other chemical media that I need to add, I have space to do it. And then behind it, I just have an Aquel uh, heater. So as you can see below, there's no sump on this aquarium, nothing too sort of tricky. Um, admittedly, the, the reason I can sort of get away with this is because my livestock choices are not something that is particularly difficult to keep. So, you know, a, a tank setup like this isn't gonna work for sort of tricky uh, aquapora corals or anything like that, things that need absolutely pristine water quality, you know, because there will be some slight nitrate buildup, I guess, over time. Uh, I'm gonna be sort of monitoring that in the future. Um, at the moment, it's pretty much not readable. Um, but I'm assuming as this tank further matures, there might eventually be a bit of nitrate because other than my water changes, I haven't really got an export method. The reason I think this mega simple reef has sort of worked out for me is because of my livestock choices. I've just got two clownfish, a couple of snails and some leather corals. When I set this nano reef tank up, I wanted to make sure I kept things ultra simple. I wanted the equipment ultra simple uh, I wanted the maintenance ultra simple and I wanted just the care for the inhabitants to be simple. So I chose clownfish. These guys stay small, uh, relatively hardy, sort of well-known saltwater aquarium fish. You know, there's nothing sort of specifically tricky to their care requirements. Um, and the corals themselves, I chose easy corals. I chose soft coral. So if we have a closer look, you can see I've got leathers, green star polyps, a cabbage coral, toadstools, you know, everything that's relatively simple. Uh, on this aquarium, I do have a lid just to hold in evaporation so that as the sort of fresh water evaporates, um, it most of it hopefully hits this lid and it sort of drops back in. It just helps reduce the amount I have to top up and overall should keep the tank a bit more stable. And as for lighting, I've got a Kessel Tuna Blue A80 just plugged in the top there. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's looking quite good. 
Um, to get these corals to pop though, what I'll do is I'll turn the blue light on and I'll get my orange filter out. Okay, you guys are looking pretty blued out at the moment, but if I put this lens on, there we go. Now, as I get a bit closer to the tank, should just help with having a good look at these corals. So there you go, I've got to start off with a sort of neon green toxic uh, toadstool coral. This guy's pretty awesome. Um, he's got surprisingly long sort of polyps on him. We've got a clownfish, hello. <laughs> Uh, we've got this sort of neon green, um, just finger leather coral, sort of nondescript, um, nothing sort of massively to note about it, other than it's sort of tripled in size in the last few weeks. Um, we've got a, another sort of uh, toadstool coral, these are all just small frags. Um, here we've got a really lovely um, cabbage coral, sort of a neon green. Uh, we've got another normal little toadstool frag there and of course this lovely sort of batch of green star polyps uh, excuse the lighting um, i probably should have really filmed this at night there is a slight sort of bit of daylight coming in here but i think you guys overall get the the sort of gist of what the corals are looking like down here i've got a sort of really nice the polyps aren't fully extended at the moment um, admittedly i haven't had the lights on for very long but there's a sort of really nice um, green finger leather coral. The fish get fed once a day. I feed them just sort of small pellets. Um, and yeah, the tank overall seems to be doing well. The, the coral is growing. You know, the original uh, finger leather coral and GSP have, the GSP's doubled in size. That finger leather coral has tripled in size in the last sort of few weeks. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how this tank is progressing. For those of you wondering, this archway, uh, I made this by using simply, uh, I think it's called cyanoacrylate super glue. And I basically attached the pieces and then I sort of sprinkled a bit of dust from the same rock uh, where I'd broken it up. I had a, sort of some leftover dust. I sprinkled that over the super glue, added a bit more super glue and again, sprinkled some more dust. And it sort of becomes like a cement and it is pretty much impossible to tell that you know that structure is made up from multiple sort of rocks um, I'm really liking the Kessel light on this tank that shimmer effect it just looks great uh, I am going to be getting a spectrum sort of controller um, for this Kessel light um, so rather than the lights at the moment they're just clicking full on and clicking full off at the end of each day um, I'm gonna have them sort of set up to ramp up and wrap down uh, on a schedule for those of you wondering this aquarium is located on my custom aquarium racking system. Excuse the mess down the bottom. It's still in its early phases, but the idea is to have a tank on each level, um, something, you know, different. Um, I think there's gonna be one more saltwater aquarium, at least one more saltwater aquarium on this rack. Uh, there's gonna be a planted aquarium and possibly a different type. And all the aquariums are gonna be in this sort of long style, um, I really enjoy it. Um, I think it just sort of gives the fish a lot of sort of horizontal swimming space, which I really like. And in terms of aquascaping, it's just relatively easy to have quite an impactful look from these long tanks. Um, and yeah, my uh, girlfriend and I are just sort of playing around with the idea of having some plants um, sort of along the sides as well. Um, and I'm not, I think it looks pretty good. I kind of like having these plants. Uh, next to the fish tanks again it's just sort of adding that extra element of nature um, sort of into the uh, into the living space and for those of you that are interested in how I sort of put this shelf together if you want to create something similar um, I have got a video out uh, it should be out now um, about how I made this shelf um, so yeah the idea is that soon enough guys this will be a sort of complete system there'll be fish tanks on every level um, and hopefully it'll look pretty good. But for now, I'm really happy with how this reef tank's doing. If you guys have any questions at all, um, please leave your questions and comments below. Subscribe if you guys aren't subscribed already. Um, and what I'll do now is I'll just leave you some nice calming footage of the tank. Um, 
I've kept a few saltwater tanks, but yeah, like I've said before, if you guys have any ideas, anything you think I could be doing better, uh, please leave it in the comments below. But other than that, guys, make sure that at some point this week, my final message to you guys is no matter what you're up to, how stressful your week's been, how sort of stressed out you are with your tank, maybe things aren't going quite the way you want them to, just remember to take that time to sit down, relax, watch your tank and enjoy it for what it is. That's what it's there for. That's what I think this hobby should you know, be about is really trying to get as much enjoyment out of these beautiful aquariums that we set up and enjoy our amazing fish and other livestock um, and just take the time to sit back and enjoy them. All right, guys, I'll catch you in a bit.